Hello everyone, how you doing? This is Horace, and we focus on Horace frame by frame. Here on the show, we do lots, we do lots of talk about photography. In the past, we discussed photos uh, from the park, we discussed photos of parties, um, we also discussed photos from the from the, the, the buildings and just personal photos of friends and family. Um, we've done that in the past. Uh, we also talk about videography. We've done uh, videos, personal videos of close photographers and producers here in the city. Um, actually, today, we're gonna do something similar, but a new, new twist. We have an expert, expert guest today. Um, the person's name is Lynn Morton. Um, he's a great person. He knows a lot about photography. If you ever sit down with him, you would love to sit down and talk about photography, um, see what he's thinking about, um, just trying to figure out uh, how he thinks and what he does. So um, I'm going to introduce him right now. Uh, everybody get to meet Mr. Lynn Morton. Hey, hey Horace. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing, Horace? Glad I'm to be here. Great. I'm doing great. Uh, I was telling everybody how you're an expert. Hope that this that wasn't too much for you. <laughs> it, that. Is, it is a lot. <laughs> that's great. That's great. So um, basically, I'm gonna get you a few questions right now. Hope you don't mind. Hit me. All right. All right. Um, what about general question? How long have you been doing photography? You know, I've been a photographer all my life. My 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 my, my father was a photographer, and he was my first teacher. I think he gave me my first camera when I was about seven years old. And for the most of my life, I'm most comfortable when I have a camera in my hand. And so at every family event, I'm the one everyone expects to shoot. So, you know, that that's the life of a, of a photographer. That's funny. Like a lot of photographers I speak to have, uh, have experienced in childhood with photography. Me, myself also. Yeah. Uh, my first camera I've seen was Olympus. Um, it was a film camera, 35 millimeter. Had an right. uh, optical zoom. It wasn't digital zoom. It was optical zoom. And that's that's, that's, that's the, the three features, three three main features: the um, film, optical zoom, and and um, and, 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 and the zoom again. But um, a lot of people have childhood good childhood experiences in photography. So um, after your childhood experience, did you have any uh, formal training in photography after that? Yeah, so I I grew up with the cameras, and then when I went to to school, I studied photojournalism. So I got my first. My first real um, photography training there, and uh, it, it was, you know, learning the camera. We were doing a lot of darkroom work. It was shooting for storytelling, and uh, and I, I did a, that. And uh, then I went into the army, and I became a photojournalist in the army as well. And so I did a lot of similar training there, but but that's been most of my formal training. His training has been to be. Um, a storyteller, photojournalist. So, you know, that's how I approach a lot of the way I shoot now, even when I shoot for branding um, for for clients who are marketing themselves or doing public relations. I'm always thinking about what kind of story can we tell with the image? Because in a lot of ways, that, that, that takes an image from good to interesting, right? If it's just a picture and nothing is going on, it's like, okay, it's cool. But when I see a story there that, that, that I can bring something to as the viewer, I think that engages your uh, your viewers a lot, a lot more. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, I'm going to jump right in. Um, today we're talking about travel, travel photography, um, something you were expert in. I, I could say, I use the word a lot, but I hope you would open your mind. Um, okay. I'm going to jump right in. I asked you to discuss the five Ps, let people know what it is and kind of go in depth with that. Well, you know, the five P's is a, is a structure I came up with to think about um, to have think about how you you do travel photography in a way that you don't come back from a trip. If you have a once in a lifetime trip or a bucket list trip or even somewhere somewhere in your neighborhood that you don't come back and not get the best possible both images and travel experience. So um it, it's it's planning and, and I, I i sort of you know i like this the alliteration where you have all the letters the same so i try and make it make a lot of my my list like that but i have planning i have producing which is the art of shooting or creating the images i have people relations because that's going important when you're there post-production and then presentation how you present it and i think within all within those five um areas you have everything from making making sure that you you arrive where you want to be and you're prepared and that you can now share the best image in a in a way to either help you you know um, share it in a you know create wall art maybe share it on your blog maybe create art to sell 
or or even uh, you know a, a coffee table book. So a lot of ways you could, a lot of things you can do with your images, but only if you are really thoughtful and strategic about how you enter into it. And we can go into each of the the five in more detail if you like. That'd be great. Uh, how about we get like one or two points for each each um each category? Yeah. We well, great. okay. So so planning. Is you know a lot. I made the mistake one time of going on this trip without any planning whatsoever, and I got there and I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't know when the light was going to be good. I didn't know, um, you know, what every what what other people shot there. I didn't know anything about it, and I felt lost and I felt kind of stupid. So I said, you know, before I go anywhere else, I'm going to take my time and and plan, which means looking up the area online and seeing what kinds of other shots people have taken there not to copy them but to know you know what are the main things i want to see and because you don't want to come back from a place and not get the one iconic view of that location so i i, I look to see what people have shot so i can make a list for myself of what i want to capture while i'm there i look at where the light's going to be and when so i've got this app called photographers ephemeris that i use and you can take any point in the globe and any point in the, any time in the future and see where the sun's going to be. So I know that when I show up there, the lights are going to be right, you know, perfect on it. And I can plan my trip around that. Um, I look up local laws because a lot of times, especially if you travel internationally, you want to know what you can and can't do before you get in trouble. You know, I had a friend who, you know, got detained and got arrested in another country because he was breaking the laws inadvertently without realizing uh, what he was doing. And then you want your packing list so that you know that you are taking everything you need. You don't get out there and find out you don't have batteries or or um, any kind of a tripod or anything you think you will need. And then one thing that people forget when they're planning is to practice. Go, go practice somewhere where you're shooting the kinds of things that you will be doing. When I was working for Canon, we created a lot of these travel experiences. Like we had one where we would go to a zoo to practice for people who would go on a safari experience so that they know when they get there exactly, you know, how they're going to shoot and how they're going to execute. So that's yeah. planning. Sorry? Yeah. Just for the amount of time, um, I'll go down the list and just give me one point that's most important for each category. Just one. Okay. Is that too long? Okay. Producing was most important. Okay. So in, in so in, in producing and shooting, you want to make sure that you have a good range of, of shots. And so I stress think with an establishing shot, which is a wide shot of what the area looks like. I go a lot of different angles and then I go into to get some detailed shots and then I look for stories I could tell. So that gives me a wide range of different kinds of shots. You don't want to come back with this with 10 of the same shots of any one location. Right. How about for people relationships? It's an important point for that. So, you know, it's important, I think, to try and meet people and, and, and learn a bit about them because you learn about the culture. And you'll also learn if you've missed anything important. So I try and make friends and I, and I just, and I don't walk up as a photographer. I just walk up as someone who's just, you know, meeting person to person. And then I introduce my, my camera and sometimes they even let me photograph them. So that's my people relations. And then in post-production, what I said, what, one, one of the things you want to do is make sure you edit ruthlessly when you go through your images, because you took the trip and you're going to have all these great feelings about the trip and you're going to want to keep more images than you need to. And, and, and I keep telling people, nobody wants to see 20 of the same picture of your, of, of your trip, not even your mother. So you, what you want to do is for each place you were, pick the best image and only show the best one. And then in presentation, don't let your images live on your hard drive. When you get back, find a way to either share it online to create some wall art, print it, or put it in a travel, in a, in a, in a book. My sister used to create these books for us. We went on family trips. And any way so that you can share your images, because after all, that's what the, you know, the, the point of photography is, is to share our art with other people. So that's your five P's. More and so then more. That was great. I appreciate your time. I'm actually gonna take a quick break right now just for the guests and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Thank you. Show some respect.
Show you give a damn. Show the world how it's done. Show them that when your community needed you the most, you showed up. Mask up, America. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Everybody, how you doing? This is Horace from Focus with Horace Frame by Frame. We're back. We're here with Lynn Morton. Um, he has a good conversation about five P's. Um, it's important stuff to know about when you go to traveling. Okay, what does five P's do? How does it help? What kind of stuff you get from that? So we're gonna do right now is dive into some of Lynn's pictures and find out how the five P's can be helpful and what kind of what kind of um, photos it can produce. Lynn, can you see this picture? Yes, I can. All right, I want you to dive right in and tell, tell us what you think we need to know. So, so we, we, we took this one on a trip that uh, we took out to, to Maine. And when I talk about the five P's, one of the things we talked about was checking to see where, where to go and where the light is. And so in a shot like this, it's very important for you to, um, to, to know that. So we knew that the sun was setting behind the lighthouse and we knew exactly where we wanted to stand so we could get there we're right, right about an hour before the sunset. Um, so we walked along down down these rocks. I went, I went down low on the rocks to look up and, and wait till the sun hit that that one point right behind, um, you know, in that corner. And then with a with a high um, f stop, a large f stop, which means like an f eleven or f thirteen. When you use a, 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 a small opening like that on your f-stop, then it creates that sort of a starburst effect from the sun when you point it at the sun. And so the, you know, that's what we were able to, that's what I was able to get there. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that, you know, when you're shooting with the sun looking at you, you usually don't get the full dynamic range, meaning you either get a lot of shadows or a lot of bright. And so, what I had to do here was shoot three images, one bright, one dark, one middle, and then merge them together afterwards to get a shot like this. But it was a lot of fun, and it was, I thought it was worth it. I like the tip you gave us about getting the sunburn, so that's something I didn't actually know, so I'm learning right now. Perfect. All right, can we go on to the next photo, is that okay? Yes. So yeah, so this is, of course I chased this shot for years, because I would always see people, I used to live in Washington, D.C., and I always see people come up and, and get this shot. And I was like, where is that? Um, so it, it's in Brooklyn, it's Pier 1, right in Brook, under the Brooklyn Bridge Park. And this picture, you, a lot of photographers were shooting it. And, and it, what, the, what you do is you get there and you get a long exposure, and that makes the water look really glassy like it does there. And you get it right at the blue hour, which is right after sunset. So you get that sort of a haze. But one of the things I, I saw here uh, is a trick I, well, a, a technique I stole from Canon Explorer for like Rick Salmon. He shot this with a, with an extra wide lens with a, uh, and so this was like, I think an eight millimeter, which is really wide and it, it distorts it a bit so that even though if you were standing there with your normal eye, you would see all these lines were straight. It makes them look sort of bowed out and gives us sort of a, a, a different kind of a, a look. So I, I like that effect a lot. And I went out there with the same, with a you know, eight millimeter lens 
and was able to get this with a, with a fish eye lens is what it's called. Wow, I, I can see the curve in the, the, the horizon in the, in the foreground. Is that part of the lens? Yeah, that, that's the fish eye effect that you get from that lens because, and, and, I, and, and if, if you were there, all of these are like straight, you know, straight in a row. Um, and so even though it looks like it's going wide and then going in into like a, a, a shrinking, you know, into a vanishing point, that's not the way it looks, but that's the way it looks when you open up that fish eye and, 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 and get such a wide um, perspective that, that the camera sort of distorts it. Sure. So, and, and mm -hmm. I, thought, I thought it made for a fun effect. It does, it's, it's very um, appealing, it's entertaining actually. Thank you. Uh, this is very, very rustic. Where did you take this? So this was at a, um, oh man, what's the name of this place? Um, so it's right outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. And it's actually like a set that they use for movies and all kinds of old stuff, like an, an old like plane that's on the ground and, uh, and this kind of stuff. And so when I, when I was there, what we did, what we really did was took models out to this, uh, this, this location and tried to shoot them in, in, in a backdrop that looks very you know, rustic, as you said, and interesting. But while I was there, I thought this might be cool just by itself in black and white because it gives you that, that sort of an old timey look. So that's what I got um, from this one. And it's it, it, and basically it, it's, it's like a heaven for photographers because they create all of these different, um, different almost mini sets where you can go and shoot. And, and 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 Horace, I'm sorry, I don't ha I don't have the name on me right now, but I can send you all of the names of these these locations when we're done. If okay. that helps. <laughs> oh yeah, horseshoe. This is look like they're in New York or you know, the beach or the, the the piers. Where was this taken? Utah. Yeah, that exactly. It, it's Horseshoe Bend. When I was out in um, actually, it's in Arizona, Pink, Arizona. I think it is. But I was on that whole trip of Utah through Arizona, and and you keep hearing about this horseshoe bend, and 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 it's basically you go on this 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 little this little hike, and then you come up to this overlook area, and you see this thing, and it's just as dramatic in person as as it. I don't even know if if I can if you capture it well with the with the image. I tried to go with an extra wide lens for this because it's so wide. And you know, a lot of people when they're shooting this would shoot two or three images and stitch them together to get almost a panoramic view. You know, I had a 10 to 22 lens that I was using for this one and just really opened it up as wide as I could. And you can see I barely got the whole thing in the in the frame with one with one. But it, you know, it, it's a really beautiful location. You try to get there at sunset. It was a, a a cloudy day, and so there were nothing. It was nothing in the sky, so that's why I cropped it so low and just cropped the sky out of it. Normally, I would have liked to get you know a little sunset and some clouds in there, but it was none of that day. So you got to go with the hand you're dealt. Uh, um, Lynn, um, I wanted to talk to you about something. Um, yes, sir. How light do you pack? I mean, just basically, what's the bare minimum of stuff that you need for, for, for travel photography? That's a good question because I tend to overpack a lot. But when I'm going and I just want to travel light, I usually do a fast prime and a telephoto. So, so the fast prime is usually my, like either a 50, 1.8 or 1.4 or a 35, 1.8 or 1.4, depending if you have a full frame or or one of those um, uh, APS-C lenses. So, but what I want to be able to do is when I get somewhere there's low light, I can you know still go in if I, if I can't take in a, a a speed light and get a good shot. And then for the rest, for the for the the telephoto lens or just any kind of a a zoom lens, it gives me more more options as I'm walking around and looking at different places. So. You know, 24 to 105, 70 to 200, either one of those with, with a fast prime, I think is what I do when I pack light. That sounds good, that sounds good. 
actually, what I wanted to do is actually show you one of my pictures. Have you discussed that? Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, I'd love to see them. This is actually at Washington, D.C. I thought everybody knows. Washington, D.C. Yeah. This is when I took this. Uh, this is Capitol building. I'm actually on a, I'm on a bus. I'm on a tour bus. And I was driving by. I had my, um, at the time, it was, it was a 15 to uh, 85. I forget. It's a kit lens. Kit lens. I was using that. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it was wide open. I'm so, I was just trying to figure out the settings. I took this picture. I think it's actually a manual. I said aperture, like maybe around 11. And I remember, I don't remember, I, sorry, I remember I was trying to figure out how to get the, the aperture from, sorry, from shallow depth of field to deep depth of field. So I was trying to figure out how to do that manually. And this is what I came up with. Where were you? Where were you? Uh, on on which side of the capital is this? This is, behind, this is, the, back, this is the back side, I believe, where the steps are in the park. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. No, that's a good angle. You know, I, I lived in Washington, D.C. for a good while, Horace, and you, I don't think you knew this, but I, I used to teach a lot of workshops around this area. Right. So so I, I'm very familiar with, with the Capitol. I love, what I love about this shot is you got a good angle where you have the, this leading line of both the trees, both taking you in, and also people walking up the stairs and you know maybe maybe it's because you were on a bus but that's not a common angle i see of, of the capitol i guess because you're a little higher than you normally would be i'm thinking if you were standing you wouldn't be able to get that shot which is why i was like wait a minute that's different and i like that because you always want a shot that somebody who lived there for 20 years will go wait a minute how'd you get that <laughs> you know i've been by there a million times and i i, I never got that one so that's cool. I like that, you know, and that's what, one of the easiest ways to get a shot nobody had seen before is just to change the, the height of the camera. So that's cool. I like that a lot. I can say I did something, I guess. Sorry? I can say I did something. You did. You did. That's a good one. I don't think a lot of people have that angle in D.C. This looks like Mardi Gras, am I correct? That's mine. No, that's not Mardi Gras, actually. That's a second line in New Orleans. So you're right that it is New Orleans. And one of the things I, I love about New Orleans, and I, I grew up there as a kid, is they do this second line, which is, if you're familiar with the culture, it, it's almost like a, an impromptu parade that they do to celebrate someone who has recently passed. Right. And so I when, when I was when I would go down there, I'd always wait to see if one went by. And when I was with Canon, I said, I want to make sure I get a good shot of it. So we hired one and we created our own parade. And I took this shot during that that parade of 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 this is the Jay Walker's parade and she is leading the whole parade. And it rained on us that day. So you see the you can see a little reflection of the sheen in the background because the, the, the all the streets were wet. Uh, couldn't have worked out better if we planned it that way. But it, sure. she was having a good time. I have a question for you. Uh, I notice the settings. Do you remember the settings of, for this picture? Um, I, I, I don't know. I think I would have shot this at around at least one one thousandth of a second because in, in, a, in a situation like this, I'm, pro I'm trying more so to freeze the shot and make sure that I don't get any camera shake in it. So I'm going into a shutter priority or shooting my shutter first one thousand of a second i know one of the guys who i was with was with was shooting two thousandth of a second i think i i probably would have i probably would do that if i had to do it over just a much faster freezing it i i, I tend to in a scene like this just go auto iso and let the camera pick my iso and if i'm in a shutter priority mode, the camera's also picking my my f-stop. I'm not as worried about, of, about that either. I'm just trying to freeze the action if I can, because I'm running, she's running, and there's a whole lot of movement going on. That's good to know. All right, um, hold on one second. Warren, sorry, then that was great. I love the picture this time with you. Um, I like the pictures and photos were interesting. I got some tips about how to take better pictures, have more fun, be a little more productive. Um, yes. Cut, cut, cut the fluff out, cut the problems out. Try to before I go, it kind of problems before you see them. Um, technique and everything like that. So, um, actually, I want to give you some time to speak to the guests, the, um, the people watching at home, um, online. 
and it's giving us brief synopsis of what you want them to know about you. We can talk about sorry for that, but let's talk about you for a few moments. So, um, thank you, thank you, Horace, and I appreciate the invite to to come and share with you because I I, I love talking about photography and because that's one of my favorite things to do. I shoot a lot. I, I I do I do photography, marketing, and branding. I do all of that, and I tend to want to shoot business, marketing, and entrepreneurs. But what I did for you because I knew we were talking about about travel photography and looking at some of my images, I created a page on my site, lynnmorton.com forward slash Horus, where I go into a lot more detail about the five P. So anybody who wants to, to learn more about it can go there, detail about and, and, and listen to a podcast and see all my notes and then see some of the pictures we talked about. So lynnmorton.com, L-Y-N-M-O-R-T-O-N.com forward slash Horus. Everybody knows how to spell Horus. And uh, you can see, you can learn more about it. And then you can learn more about me and the work I do. So thank you very much for the opportunity to share that. All right, thank you, Lamar. And uh, to, to, the, to the guests, sorry, to, the, to the fans, to the, to the, um, the guests. I appreciate everybody showing up. Um, I love talking to you guys. I love sharing my life. and I hope everybody else to share their life. Um, we get to learn a lot, get better as photographers, videographers. Um, Enjoy some good pictures, and um, that's basically it. So um, we're gonna do we're gonna wrap up the show for now. Um, we're gonna go we're not forever, but for, for now, but not forever. And so uh -huh. basically, um, say thank you for showing up in the morning. Thank you out there, um, our viewers, for showing up, and we we'll see you again on the time. All right, Oops. thank you very much. Thanks, Horace. I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, I'll poop already. You're making me nervous. Thank you. Thank you.